Western India, the residence of Dr. Vaman Dattatreya Vartak. Although the name may not mean much to the common man, the field of botany resounds with the scholarly exploits of this extraordinary man who has made careful studies of almost every known plant in India. In fact, Dr. Vartak, who retired as the director of the Maharashtra Association for the Cultivation of Science, a premier research institute in Pune, has travelled all over India in the pursuit of his one obsession, the collection of herbarium specimens. Dr. Vartak was not an exceptional student in his school and college days, which only goes to prove that academic excellence is not essential to make a mark in a field one is deeply interested in. What is needed is a passion for the subject, the willingness for hard work and no desire for shortcuts. These attributes Dr. Vartak possesses in abundance. Every important area from Kanyakumari in the south to Kashmir in the north, from Saurashtra in Gujarat in the west to the borders of Burma in the east has seen this keen botanist walking for miles to find, collect and record the existence of various plant specimens. Although Dr. Vartak has undergone a bypass heart surgery, he still loves botanical exploration tours and is often called the living encyclopedia of flowering plants in Maharashtra and Goa. He is an expert on ethnobotanical studies, which deal with the role of wild plants in the life and culture of tribal communities. Most of his studies have been concentrated in the Western Ghats. His work on forests preserved on religious grounds, known as Devrai or sacred groves, is now recognized throughout India and abroad. Although such sacred groves can be found scattered in various parts of India, Dr. Vartak has made an extremely detailed study of the sacred groves found in Maharashtra. Through various research papers and articles on these groves, Dr. Vartak has made an earnest plea for their continued conservation, pointing out that the Dev Rai could prove to be a rich source of varied plant specimens, providing a natural laboratory for plant gene experts and environmentalists. Dr. Vartak also believes that the sacred groves could well hold the secret of the source of the wild relatives of modern-day cultivated plants. Dr. Vartak's studies on the sacred groves have brought on record information about a number of little-known uses of plants, the environmental impact of sacred groves on the neighboring areas, and their socio-economic benefits to the local population. Dr. Vartak's love for increasing his already exhaustive collection of plant specimens is so great that most of his days during a rarely taken period of holidays mostly results in bringing back and classifying more species of flora. Most students of botany have had to prepare a herbarium. This involves the careful collection of specimens, their neat preservation and classification. But Dr. Vartak's herbarium is no ordinary one. In my collection, there are about 15,000 specimens mounted on the herbarium sheets. Besides this, I have about 20,000 blue specimens classified according to their family, genera and species. Now most of these specimens are from Western India and I am sure this collection will help research fellows for carrying out their further research. 
Apart from his huge herbarium collection, Dr. Vartak has hundreds of fleshy plants carefully preserved in bottles. These have to be stored in bottles as the fleshy nature of these plants prevents their being preserved by pressing and mounting on herbarium sheets. These bottles take up a considerable area in the professor's residence, but as the subject is extremely close to Dr. Vartak's heart, he feels it is well worth the trouble. Showing nitrogen fixing nodules. The name of the plant is Indophora trifolia. The importance of this nitrogen fixing bacteria is where the bacteria have Dr. Vartak interacts actively with students and expert botanists, generously imparting the knowledge he has garnered over an eventful career. He firmly believes that the common man should be made aware of various ecological issues. Only then, he argues, would any scheme really be successful rather than studies and research done by experts. For instance, Dr. Vartak firmly believes that the conservation of the natural ecosystem and endangered plant species, afforestation programs, setting up of plant gene banks and other projects could only be made more meaningful if scientists could reach the grassroots level of society, making them aware of the benefits. <laughs> Although Dr. Vartak has attended several international seminars and has had expert discussions with the best in the field, his teaching approach is extremely simple. He finds time to explain tiny details of flowering plants to anyone who is interested and can often be found behind a slide projector with valuable tidbits of knowledge flowing continuously from his generous soul. He is a keen photographer, although most of his pictures have been of the trees and plants that he loves so much. His infinite knowledge of the forests enables him to get photographs which the ordinary eye would have missed. His current projects include the setting up of a plant gene bank on Susala Island on behalf of a research foundation in Pune. After his retirement from MSCS, active retirement, uh, he joined us as a volunteer for our Susala Gene Bank project. Now this Gene Bank project is a project carried out in a place called Susala in the Mulshi Dam area. The island belongs to Tata Oil uh, Electric Company and they have permitted us to carry out all these botanical experiments and create a gene bank of all botanical species of the Western Ghat. And we are busy with this project for the last three years. And of course, Dr. Warsag is an extremely important part of this particular project. He is one of the, what should I say, the founder members of this particular concept. And in fact, he is our guiding principal as far as the botany research is concerned, along with Dr. Suri Nara. As a research guide, Dr. Vartak and his collection of both rare and common plant species have helped many batches of students attain their post-graduation. A special prize has been endowed in his name in the University of Pune for the student obtaining the highest marks in floristic study. A keen collector of marine shells, he has several from the coastal areas of Western India. Whenever he visited a coastal area for botanical exploration, he often spent a few hours in the evenings to roam about in the intertidal zones in order to find and collect every imaginable kind of shell. Another example of his thoroughness is clear from his insistence that each shell be properly identified by the Zoological Survey of India. Incidentally, he is now member of the Advisory Committee of the Zoological Survey of India as well as that of the Botanical Survey of India.
Although Dr. Vardak often worries about the future of his collection, experts would definitely vouchsafe its long-term value. Uh, most of the marine shells are identified by Zoological Survey of India. Well, of course, it's a uh, one-man show and it's very difficult to maintain. I, I, I don't know what is what will be its future. Yet another hobby that the inexhaustible Dr. Vartak has taken up with his characteristic enthusiasm and thoroughness is philately. His large collection includes stamps from virtually every nation around the globe. He believes that every stamp tells a tale and says a person could be educated on diverse topics through the tiny little stamp. A visitor shown this collection of stamps often goes back wiser and the topic could be nearly anything under the sun. As is to be expected, he has several stamps on plants and flowers, which he explains to his grandchildren with much glee. This modest man, who has even had a lichen named after him, has a keen ear for music and is a superb mouth organ player often interspersing his long hours of writing with beautiful melodies. Indeed, as we leave him with his beloved plants and trees, the name Vaman Dattatreya Vartak seems like music to our ears. <laughs>